Luke 11, 34, it says, The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light. As when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Father, you know the needs of the house. You know the hurts and the ailments. You know the concerns, the cautions. You know where we're heading, God. So, Father, I pray now that you would take the words that I will minister of these next few moments. And, Father, address and touch each and every person in here in some way. God, when they leave here, they'll have something deeper something that they can take for their lives, for their present day lives. So God, give us all an ear to hear that we may understand and gain wisdom thereby. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me see that. Thank you. Thank you. I want to use for a, a title this morning, the perception of reality, the reality of perception. The perception of reality the reality of perception. I was watching a few Saturday mornings ago, I was watching uh, flipping the channels and uh, came across a show that um, we had watched a couple of seasons ago, The Preachers of L.A. I know y'all familiar with that show, Preachers of L.A. Uh, it'll be back on uh, prime time here, I think this week, matter of fact, sometime August 22nd, something like that. And um, this wasn't a, a repeater from something two years ago, uh, whenever it was last, the first season. This was more of a... Uh, uh, Michelle, yeah, I remember Michelle from Destiny Child. She was, was hosting uh, the show, and she had a um, a meeting with the men, the pastors, and the and bishops' um, man cave. And she had a meeting with the ladies at their first lady tea party, the first lady tea party. So as I was, you know, watching, get on, getting myself ready, fixing the bed, and as I was watching this uh, the show, uh, it came to the part where um, she's with the ladies, and one of the things I heard. Uh, I think it was Michelle who actually said, she said, I, I got to go get my first lady on. Get my first lady on. And when I heard that, my spirit pricked because I, 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 I began to hear in my spirit the word persona, perception. And as I listened more to that, and you, if you ever watch the show, and it, it could be any show for that matter, especially when there's a, a, a taping or something, you, they, they take different cuts and you can see how the other women are looking or responding to what someone else is saying and whatnot. So I was just studying their perception and studying uh, what they were saying and how they were looking. I'm saying to myself, do, do, do these ladies really want to be there? Do they really want to be dressed up in big hats and, and these nice clothes? Do they really want to sit in front of a, uh, a camera and speak about their lives as first lady? And I, I begin to ask God the question, God, what is our stance? Where does perception come in at when it comes down to us being a Christian? Surely, surely, surely many of us, uh, if not more than we are aware of, we have allowed our perception or the perception of us by others to shape our reality. When someone feels that you are a certain way and you hear that over and over again, you begin to shape your reality around what others think of yourself, such, with, such as with the people in Hollywood. I don't know how many times I've heard a, a behind the scene type of um, uh, interview where people who are in Hollywood, you know, I'm sure most of them are not like, like this, but some of them, they don't want to put that facade. It's, for them, it's a facade. The perception that others, we, the average day person, have of these Hollywood stars, these people in, in the limelight, they put on this persona about themselves, but when you look at it, that's not really that way. My wife and I, we like to watch Wife Swap in the past two years. Um, wife swap, they've been doing, maybe longer than that, they've been doing celebrity wife swap. So you watch celebrity wife, wife swap, and, and you can see certain people that you may know just from seeing them in Hollywood on TV, and you look at them behind in their house like, they're nothing like that. Now, some of them are to that extreme. One of the Jacksons, Randy Jackson, I think it was, he was to that extreme. But there is most of them, most of them are like, wow, you would never expect these people to be just down-to-earth people, seemingly down-to-earth people. Um, but when they get in 
the, when they get in front of the cameras and they get in public, then they put on this persona based off of a perception or based off the reality of a perception that was created for them or they created for themselves. So I begin to look at myself, say, okay, God, God, you know, when you start, when, when you start probing into certain questions and, and certain things of God, and, you know, God has this way of making you look inside. Says, okay, you know, you do the same thing. You put on this persona sometimes. I remember some years ago, um, in ministry, some years ago in ministry, uh, she's no longer with us, but the person said, uh, we like it when you dress up, you know, the full suit and everything. I was like, so for that, for, I, mean, I remember for a few weekends after that, I went on this binge to dress up to come into church. But that wasn't me. I like jeans. I like, I like jeans and a nice pair of shoes and a, and a nice shirt. That's, that's my style. That's my reality. But I remember allowing the perception that someone had of me to change my reality. And if we're not careful, family, we'll, 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 we'll allow our perception of reality to mess up who we are or to become something that God has not intended us to become, or at least for a season of time. So we have to be careful as we, do, as we, uh, we look at perception. But what you need to understand, what I'm trying to communicate today, two things. Understand the, um, uh, what is perception and how perception can um, mess up your reality. So when I look at perception and reality, I see there is a tension between the two. Because in one vein, perception can be good for your reality. In another vein, perception can be bad for your reality. What I'm saying. Let's say, uh, let's get more spiritual. Let's say somebody come in here and they say, you are a prophet or you this, you this. Then, and God could really have called you to be this, but you don't see that in yourself. So the perception of others of you can shape your reality, which may end up being a good thing. But on the other hand, someone come in here and say, you're this. God has called you to have a healing ministry, and you have never heard anything about you being a healing ministry, and you have no inclination of that, nothing as God should. Matter of fact, this is the first person that ever told you this in your whole Christian journey. But you can allow that perception to shape your reality and lead you down the wrong path of saying you should be this. So we have to take into consideration that perception, the perception of reality, the perception of reality, there it lies a tension in between the two. Tension meaning there's a stretching, there's an there, there's a imbalance between what we perceive and what is really real. So let me give you a couple of definitions. First, of reality. Um, reality can be defined as the world or the state of things as, as they actually exist, as opposed to an idealistic or uh, notional ideal. Basically what it is, we know reality is something that is at least really should be real. They actually exist. Another definition, just kind of listen, another definition is reality is the state or quality of being actual or true, which you know to be, look, here's a good example. My wife, I was, uh, I like to wear my flip flops uh, or my, what you would call slide in shoes. Um, and as of late this summer, I told myself at the beginning of summer, you know what, I'm gonna wear my flip flops more because I just so comfortable, them dog on tennis shoes, be squeezing my foot and whatnot. So I'm driving down Killing Hill Road. We're on our way to the game up in Norcross, back towards where I work at. I get halfway down there. I, I phone my wife because she's in the car, and I'm, the boys and I are in the truck. I said, I forgot my tennis shoes. So she said, I guess you're going to be a, 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 a ghetto dad or something like that. <laughs> Perception. Perception. So now, when she said that, the first thought of mine was, well, I need to turn around because I'm going to be seen as no ghetto dad. <laughs> but I just kept on driving. I said, no, you know what? No, I'm going to be all right. They're going to be all right. Yeah. They're going to be all right. So when I was, and now he, 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 here's how perception can, can shape your reality, okay? So when I was walking, <laughs> man, well, us humans, we something else. When I was walking from the parking lot to the field, there's another family that was walking with us, one of Kai's teammates, his parents and whatnot. So here, here's me. Here's shame on you, Cornelius. Here's me. I'm saying, man, I forgot my dog gonna slip my shoes. Now I'm walking here with it. I'm trying to set the stage already for how I think I'm going to be perceived by people. I'm trying to shape for them my reality so they won't perceive something bad. But then when I got on the field, I only made that comment once. When I got on at the park and whatnot, I felt comfortable. I'm walking my flips out up those things. Whatever. 
I lost the whole uh, uh, mindset of, well, they could perceive you to be some ghetto dad <laughs> because you're wearing around flip-flops. Now, it probably been worse if I had white tube socks on. But when I'm wearing that, I always wear black socks, nice looking socks and whatnot. Now, white tube socks, yeah, I probably been really had a complex about that. But, but I got there, and, 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 and the perception, in the beginning, family, the perception was I'm going to be seen as some, you know, dad from the hood, ghetto dad. But I noticed, I said, I'm not going to allow, I don't think I said exactly in my conscious, I said, I'm not going to allow the perception of me to shape my reality. The reality is, family, I forgot my shoes, genuinely forgot my shoes. So that's my reality. So they just going to have to get with it. So we have to understand that sometimes we allow to, what, our perception to shape our reality or the perception of, of others, of us, to shape our reality. So the state of quality of being actual or true, the reality was I forgot my shoes. That's true. Period. So. I should not allow, and when you know something to be true and to be actual and factual, you should not allow the perception of others or even your own perception to change your reality. Yes. It's true. Yes. Okay, come on. This, all right. Here's another definition. This is I really want you to kind of key in on and maybe write down for yourself. Reality can be defined as the belief of something you believe to be true. That's the definition I want you to kind of key in on. Reality is the belief of something you believe to be true. Now, perception. Perception. Let me give you a couple of definitions of perception. Perception is the process, act, or faculty of perceiving. When you per perception is perceiving, is observing, is knowing something. Another definition, listen, it's the conscious mental registration of a sensory stimulus. You understand what I mean by sensory? Five senses, right? Uh, help me touch, taste, smell, feel, and sight. I think we said two of the same touch. I got to read down my paper. Come y'all help me out. I don't want to look at my notes. Come on. One sensory touch. Hear, sight, smell, three, taste, and touch. So a, a perception is a con conscious mental registration of a sensory Stimulus. Let me give you another definition. This, this definition I want you to kind of, it's a long one, but kind of just key in on some of the, uh, the key words here. Perception is the conscious, listen, the conscious recognition and interpretation of a sensory, the five we just named, that serves as a basis for understanding, learning, knowing, or for motivating a particular action or reaction. Here it is. So the, the, uh, if you read some psychology articles, you'll see they talk about the perceptual process. The perception, y'all learned this stuff? Uh, you know, well. Y'all learned this? Did you learn this when you were still? So y'all know what I'm about to say, huh? The per, huh? OK, the persona. So me, don't, don't give me a grade later, not now. Yes, yeah, yeah, there you go. That's your perception. The reality is when I got out of the, out the article, and it wasn't Wikipedia, so I give it a little more credibility. Okay, listen, so I'm not going to go through all the different things, like maybe six stages of the perceptual process, but I'm going to give you four that I want you to, to really kind of key in, and we'll kind of think on that as we go on through the rest of this here. So the first stage is a, a stimulus. You need something to, to, um, to uh, you need some stimulus for you to begin to perceive. Remember the definition is the conscious recognition and interpretation of a sensory. So the first thing that comes first is a stimulus. If I pick this towel up right now and throw it at Monique, her, her, uh, her conscious, she has a sensory that's going to be recognized what I'm about to do. And she may react. She may duck. Is she fast enough? She's going to duck or move to the side. So listen, so the first thing is a stimulus. First stage that comes into your life, a stimulus, something that you touch, you hear, you see, you taste, or you smell. The second stage will be a perception, is what you perceive, is what you are now aware of. So first it comes a stimulus, something that you are stimulated by, that becomes you become now aware of it. This third stage is a recognition. It is what you interpret that you are aware of caused by some stimulus, okay? So if I walk up to you, Dolores, right now and just pinch you, pinch you, 
she's probably going to have, she's going to go through that stage. She'll have a stimulus will, will cause her to uh, become aware. And then she will interpret. And the spinal stage, she will, uh, the spinal stage is a action. And hopefully her action is, is not to swing back at me. <laughs> so when we consider the perceptual process, and this happens all the time without us even being aware. You walk in sometime in this place here, you smell bread. Because they're baking next door, especially on a weekday. The stimulus for us is to smell. The perception, you become aware, they're baking bread. The, the, the recognition is now you start interpreting, or you, you smell something, you, 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 you are aware of something, and you interpret, what is that? Is that bread, or is that a roll? Is that a loaf of bread? You become, you start interpreting, and then the action is, man, I'm hungry, I want something. This is, is a perceptual process happen all the time. And family, listen, from that shapes our reality. From that shapes what you believe to be true. So let me read the definition one more time. Perception is the conscious recognition and interpretation. You interpret everything. There's nothing that you are not interpreting. You may not understand it, but you are in your, your senses, your, the way God has wired our bodies, you're perceiving, you're being coming aware, and you're interpreting, and you're taking action on everything. So it's the conscious recognition and interpretation of a sensory that serves as a basis for understanding, learning, knowing, and for motivating a particular action or reaction. Now, let's look at these a couple of examples in Scripture. Turn with me to Judges chapter 6. So when we think about realities, listen, important point here. Go to Judges 6 while I'm uh, talking here. When you think about reality, there are two realities, family, that we should be conscious of. There's the natural reality. There's what, this is what we see, what we hear what we know by the natural senses, and there's also a spiritual reality. That is what we believe of God, what is written by God or of God, and what has been spoken by God or of God. That is a spiritual reality. So as we look at the perception of reality and understanding that how whatever stimulus that comes in our mind and how it affects we, we become aware and we begin to interpret and then we take some action on both the natural realm and the spiritual reality. And when we understand those two, it can help us, family, as Christians, better deal with perception, better deal with how perception affects our reality. So turn with me, please, to Judges chapter 6. Look at the story of Gideon. Story of Gideon. So Gideon was... Uh, rather, the Israelites were in, uh, were being overtaken, repeatedly being overtaken by the Midianites. Hang on, guys. We're repeatedly being overtaken by the Midianites, and here comes um, an angel comes to the Lord in, in Judges and talks to uh, Gideon. Let's look at Gideon's perception. Come on. I'm going to mark this here. Let's look at Gideon's perception of himself. Let's see how we do this. Now look at verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abazite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all our, his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Did you see the perception there? Gideon is allowing or had allowed his perception to shape his reality. Gideon had, Gideon's perception, listen, Gideon's perception of reality was that God had forsaken Israelites. That, they, that God was no longer with them or walking with him. 
Another perception that he had of, of, uh, that shaped his reality was that his clan was weak. A third perception we see from this that Gideon had of his, that was shaped his reality, that he was the least in his father's house. Now, on the other side, remember I said there's two realities. There's the spiritual, the natural reality, and then there's the spiritual reality. On the other side of it, or that other reality, God's perception, God's perception of reality was that he's been there all along. Whilst Gideon had perceived that God was nowhere around and now was shaping his reality and maybe to cause his head to hang down, God is perception, no, I've been there all along. Second perception I think God has, or we see that God has, that Gideon will be able to defeat the Midianites. So Gideon's perception of himself being, uh, being uh, from a clan that is weak, the weakest one in Manasseh, that he is the least in his father's house, calls him to see that God could not use him or that he could not do defeat the Midianites. But God's perception in the spiritual reality, hear me, sometimes, family, if not sometimes, we need to be more in tune to the spiritual realities and allow spiritual perception to shape our spiritual reality and our natural reality. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Remember, your stimulus is this, 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 and whatever else we said, those five. But there is a spiritual perception that you and I must tune into and hone in on and improve and, and, and get better at so we can perceive the things in the spirit such that what we perceive in the spirit can change our natural reality. Okay, look at this. So, another example. 1 Samuel 25, 2-15. I kind of mentioned this story in passing before. Nabal. Nabal. Um, this is a story about Nabal and David went to Nabal and said, hey, I protected your men while they were out in, in um, where, where were they? Uh, go, go to 1 Samuel 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25. Carmel, they were in Carmel. So while, they, while Nabal's men were shearing sheep in, Car in Carmel and David protected all them. So here comes David. He goes to Nabal and says, hey, I looked after your men. Can you send me some food? Whatever comes your way, can you give it to me? And Nabal's perception of himself, Nabal allowed his perception to create his reality and cause him to lose his life days later. Here's what's the problem with Nabal. Nabal's perception of his reality, his natural reality, was that he thought he was the man. Nabal, look, his servants call him a scoundrel. His wife said he's a, he's, you low, dirty scoundrel. So he, he had a, he had an in, Remember, listen, listen, family, sometimes your perception of yourself can lead you down to a path of destruction, to your demise. Yeah. This was the place of the case with Nabal. So Nabal thought he was the man. Nabal thought he owed no one nothing. If you look at the text, whew, I, so what? I have many servants and they all left. Does not mean just because they, they say I'm a servant, they was a servant to me that I could give them some? No, Nabal thought he owed no one nothing. It's a bad perception. When you have a bad perception, it impacts your reality or it shapes your reality. Another perception I see of Nabal is that because he had money, he thought he can do what he wanted to do. He can do whatever he wanted. Look at verse number six. Uh, yeah, verse six. It says, and thus you say to him who lives in prosperity, peace to you with peace to your house and peace to all that I have. He lived in prosperity. Because he was rich, he thought that he can do whatever he wanted to do. But see, Nabal, listen, Nabal missed something. He missed the spiritual reality of who David was, that David was anointed king, that David was a man after God's own heart, that David was a just and kind man in that he spared the lives or he protected the lives of Nabal's shearers. So, family, listen. When we allow our perception to shape, especially a wrong or a false perception to shape our reality, we run the risk of missing out on God. We run the risk of being something that we're not. We run the risk of, of missing God's blessing in our lives because we allow what others have thought of us or what you think of yourself, your perception of your, listen, your perception of yourself. That's probably worse than the than the perception of others of you or from others of you. 
you know, somebody say this about me, I probably could, you know, block it out. But if I begin to say about me, then it's going to start shaping my reality even the more. Okay. All right. One more example, then we're going to, we're going to move on. Listen to this. Go to Matthew 6. I want you to see this in text, please. Go to Matthew 16, 13 through 16. Matthew 16, 13 through 16. Man, I gotta get to the notes. To the, to the, to the, to the stuff. Matthew 16, let's begin reading at verse 13. Marvin, can you open those doors? Let's open them. Oh, yeah, both of them, yes. Look at the text. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, who, did, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for the flesh, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Remember I said earlier, we must tune into God's, we must have spirit spiritual perception of spiritual reality so that it can affect our natural reality. So here's a problem. The Jews, the Jews' perception of the reality of who Jesus was, they thought he was merely John the Baptist. They, they thought he was just a prophet. Remember, they're looking for the king. They're looking for a messiah. Because they had a bad perception or a misperception or incorrect perception of who Jesus was, they missed out on the blessings that will come from Jesus being in their midst. So they missed out on that spiritual reality family that he was the son of the living God and he was the Christ. So, so again, we see through these three examples, there's many, many more you can give in here, but there's a tension that lies between the perception. You know, they were truly looking for a king. They wanted the king to come, but that perception of who Jesus was uh, uh, caused or blocked it from seeing that he was the living God. There's a tension, family, that you and I deal with between perception and reality. The perception of reality sometimes can mess us up if we are not careful. So there is a tension between there. But here's something I want to give you. When the two intersect, that is, human perception of reality and God's perception of spiritual reality, then uh, perception or the perception of reality is in balance. In balance, not in balance, but in the preposition. Y'all nod your head, say I understand. Okay, thank you. In balance. When our perception in the human realm intersects with God's spiritual perception, then everything is in balance. You'll know, okay, yes, that sounds good or that sounds right. Yeah, that's somewhat like me, but the spiritual reality says this. Or the spiritual reality says, dude, you're not there yet. So when the two crosses and they meet, then you find yourself living in balance with perception in your lives. So some of these tensions that I wrote down here as I was thinking through this, that I perce listen to this, listen. Our perception of what we believe to be real can cause us to miss God. That's one tension. Another tension. Perception can cause us to be something that we are not or not be something that we're supposed to be. How do you perceive yourself? Not how others perceive you. How do you perceive yourself? If you got a pen, write down in your notes. If you take a notes and you got a pen, at least in your mind, answer that question quietly. Don't say it out loud, please. How do you perceive yourself? What is your perception of you? And how does that perception match up with God's spiritual reality? Do you even know his spiritual reality or the spiritual perception from God of you? If you're not sure, or if you have an uh, a, a unhealthy perception of yourself, then you will either be something that you're not supposed to be, or you're going to miss out on, being, on not being something that you're supposed to be. If God says you're supposed to be this, but your perception is, well, no, I don't think so. Well, you're missing out on God. And you know what? You're missing the mark. You will, in, especially if you know that God's telling you, you're not doing it. You're sinning. You're, you're, you, you're sinning. So 
One of these tensions, family, is that perception can cause us to be something that we are not. Another perception is that perception of what we believe is to be real can cause us to do, to do something or not do something in the right way, timing, or spirit. Perception. Remember, it's a conscious recognition and interpretation of a sensory that leads you to learning and knowing and understanding or motivates you to doing some action or some reaction. When you come against the next, honey, you tell me about your job sometime with not your perception. How do you perceive what's going on in your job? How do you perceive uh, 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 Monique as your assistant directors and how, what you perceive? Your perception of what you look at things affects your reality. And if your perception is wrong, then it, you, Man, are, are you, are you, hopefully God is saying something to you right now as you're, as I'm ministering because I'm, 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 I'm seeing again that some, listen, we, I, I'm guilty of it. I allow my perception of certain people, of certain things to call me either to do or not to do, to say or not to say. When all along, if, I, if my perception would interact with God's spiritual perception, then I would be in balance. I would know that, okay, yes, you're doing it right. You're, you're not off because I'm, I'm considering God's spiritual, the spiritual reality. Stop walking by sight, Cornelius. And over and over and over again, I hear it in God's spirit. I hear it in my spirit. But yet, when the next challenge comes, I always want to walk by sight. God say no, the spiritual reality is you should be walking by faith. My perception of certain things has shaped my reality and caused me like, oh no, I don't want to do this. Oh no, I don't want to, I don't want to go check my bank account because if I check my bank account, it's going to be, oh no. And then I go check it. It's like, oh, we're good. <laughs> perception. You perceive that such and such, such and such is going to be, so you do everything you can to avoid it. When God is saying, listen, consider your human perception of things, yes, of reality, of reality, but not, don't let them supersede my spiritual or the spiritual perception of spiritual reality. Sometimes I look, especially our church bank account, sometimes I look at our church bank account, even just yesterday, because I got in my mind, blah, 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 especially with all this stuff going on and we have this new addition. I look at it and I say, oh God. Type in the passcode, bbt.com. I don't want to do it. I want to go look. I want to go look, God. I'm being transparent with y'all. Every day this week, I kept hearing God say, go look, go look, go look. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Because my perception was, I was going to see a number and figure that I didn't want to see. And it's time to, write a, it's time to write out a payment. So I go hit the account yesterday because I had to buy the communion cups. I said, well, I got to go buy the communion because I need to go. I knew we had enough money to cover that. That's not, a, that's not an issue. But I said, okay, go, God. I was, God said, go look at it. I was sitting at Starbucks. My perception shaped my reality. I was like, okay. Go to it, bbt.com. Put the password in your name, password. Where did all that money come from? <laughs> I'm like, man, you did it again. You allow your perception to impact your reality, and you've been... We must see. I had an unhealthy perception of what was sitting in that bank account. When all along, I probably could have reduced myself just a little. I didn't stress that much, but a little bit of you know, if I would just go, just go freaking do the thing, go look at it. So we must understand, family, that our perception, what we, uh, our, 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 our sense, the stimulus in our lives is causing us to take certain action, and if we're not careful, we'll miss out on God, or we're bringing ourselves certain un undue stress. Because of an unhealthy perception. I know my wife, love her. She comes to me last week, two days last week, just, oh, goodness. If I could have just told her, come on out, honey, I would have, but you know, I don't say that. Because, <laughs> you know, but how we perceive things can impact what we shape to be our reality. All right, let's continue on. I need to kind of move through this. The title was The Perception of Reality, The Reality of Perception. The reality of perception is that family perception is quite powerful. 
it is extremely powerful. Let me give you three things why I feel that perception is powerful. First of all, perception is interpretive. It's interpretive. When you have a healthy perception of something, it allows you to interpret what's right, or I should say, just say like this, it allows you to interpret what's really there. I'm thinking of the story of um, Elijah, how he would keep on coming by the lady's house, and the lady says, I perceive that you are a prophet. Let me go make a room. He, she tells her husband, let me go make a room for him so the next time he comes, he can, you know, come eat with us and sleep with us. And then after a few times, it says that uh, Elijah called her. What did she have need of? And she had no child. You know the story. So she was blessed with the child, the Shumanite woman. Because, remember, perception, the reality of perception, listen, the reality of perception is that perception is very powerful. Perception is interpretive. It will allow you, if it's healthy, to perceive something that will eventually uh, allow God to bless you because of your perception or your interpretation of that. How you perceive something, family, how if you have a healthy perception of what is in front of you and you can interpret that well, man, you are on, you, you can see now how the reality of perception is very powerful. She perceived that he was a prophet. Take it the woman at the well. When Jesus was at the well, you know, the woman who had about five husbands and the one she was living with, the, you know, they were shagging up together. <laughs> Teach it had him. There's no scripture reference of... Shack it up in the Bible. No whatsoever. No shack it up. I'm saying to myself, dude, don't you know the story? Come on, man. I respect you and all, but you just missed that one. Ain't no shack it up in the Bible. No, the word shack it up is not in there, but the concept is very much there. Okay, let me stop. I want to All right, all right, all right. You, you made me say that. No. All right, so, so listen, so, 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 so the woman at the well, she said, I perceive that you, she perceived something, and through her interpretation of what she perceived, it allowed her to receive the blessings from God of knowing that this is Jesus, the Messiah. And, you know, she went off and told everybody. So, so the power that comes with perception, family, is that perception is interpretive. The second thing, listen, perception is directive. Once you interpret something, and you interpret it correctly because you have a healthy perception, then you are allowed now to move in the right direction. It's directive. Remember the stimulus, the perceptual process. A stimulus first, some stimulus, you are perceived or you become aware, and then you interpret, and then you take action. When you, the power of perception is that it is, it is interpretive and is also directive. Because if God is showing something before you and you interpret the reality of it in God's sense, then now you know how to move. It is directive. And thirdly, family, listen, thirdly, uh, the power of perception is that it is motivational. When you interpret something and you see the direction of your interpretation, it jumps you. You want to go do it now. If somebody say, well, all you got to do is this. Let's say it's a refi. All you got to do, you interpret this here, and they tell you, well, this is what you got to do. Your perception of refine is wrong, ma'am, sir. Let me give you the right perception about refine your home. Okay, well, this is it. So you interpret based on a healthy perception. Now you have direction, and guess what you're going to do? You're going to go refine at home because now you just understand and you have a, a correct or a healthy perception of what it is that's in front of you. So perception is interpretive. Perception is directive. Thoroughly, perception is motivational. So, last part, be done. Well, yeah. So, how do we balance perception and reality? That's what I want to know, God. I want, I want to know, okay, God, it's good. Good thanks for the knowledge, the you know, psych, psych, psychology of it and whatnot. But I, I want to know, give me something practical. How do, how, do, how do we balance perception and reality? Let's look at our text. Now we're going to go to our text. Luke 11. How do we balance? You know, so the next time somebody say, you're going to look like a ghetto dad, you want to know how to balance that. 
And you know, I wore my flip flops the entire day. I had my, I was in Starbucks, I was in Marshalls, I was in Ross, I was in K and G, I was in Family <laughs> Christian Bookstore. Man, I was, and look, I was so comfortable. I think the guy who's sitting next to me in Starbucks, he went out to his Jeep and got his flip flops and came back in and sat down. <laughs> he probably like, hey, you look comfortable, you look good. I'm gonna get mine. Now the worst gonna happen when I leave home to go to work and forget my tennis shoes. Cause I drive sometimes and I, and I apologize to the ladies. I didn't know like, why y'all be having all these shoes in y'all car and whatnot? <laughs> now I understand. My feet feel so much better when I'm driving home after a long day in them doggone shoes. So I understand, but I'm not gonna be having three, four pairs in there now. That's just too much. Got a whole, got a whole DS, got a whole section of DSW in there. Goodness. Y'all know it's fucking up your car. I don't know why y'all leave them in there. Oh, yeah, I'm only going to do that one. So, so listen. So how do we balance perception and reality? Let's look at our text. Look at our text. I'm having a little fun here. All right, look 11, look 11. So look at verse 34. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye, when you think of eye, you think of perception. What the word are we looking at? You ain't talking about your natural, your natural, necessarily your natural eye. It's your ability to understand, the ability to perceive. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. The New King James or the King James Version uses to translate good as single. It's kind of a weird word, but that's what it is. When you go to look at it, it's just, it's, you know, single. It says, so, so. The lamp of the body is the, is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is single, what does that mean? When it is functioning in its natural state, when it is, everything is okay with your eye, when it is single, when it is, it, it, it's, 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 its faculty is working as it should be, then it says, look at then it says your whole body is also full of light. So here's the thing. First thing I want to give you, how do you rebalance perception and reality? Number one, Keep your eyes clean. Keep your eyes clean. How do we clean our eyes? Let's speak of the natural first. Huh? Who? Okay, which is what? Some kind of liquid? Liquid can also create to a, a water. When you think of water in spiritual terms, you think of the word. Keep your eyes clean. What do I mean? Let me break this down in three points. Keep your eyes clean. Keep your mind. Remember, your eyes. He's not talking. This is metaphorically speaking here. Your eyes is your understanding. Your knowing your knowledge. So if you're going to guard yourself or if you're going to, uh, um, to keep perception and reality in balance, then you must clean your eyes. You do that by clearing your mind. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. But be ye by what? Clean your eyes. Look at your name and say, clean your eyes. Clean your eyes, sir. Some of so you know, those of y'all who wear contacts and whatnot, y'all got to take your contacts and clean your contacts. Y'all got grit and stuff on those contacts. Clean Y'all got to, you can't see it. It hurts your eyes. You can take a, you can draw a lot of natural uh, parallel into the spiritual in that. But just think of how your eyes, so, so, Clean, new, uh, uh, renew your mind. Ephesians 4, 23 tells us, be renewed, listen, be renewed, Ephesians 4, 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You clean your eyes, family, or you keep your eyes clean. We keep our eyes clean by renewing our spirit in the mind or renewing our mind. Another way we can clean our eyes is Clean your understanding. Clean your mind. Clean your understanding. The psalmist says in Psalm 119, 120 says, 125 says, Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies, your laws, and your instructions. If my eyes, if, if my understanding family is dirty, if, I don't, if, I, if I'm clawed with little bits of this and that and it's gritty, then I won't be able to perceive Then I will allow others' perception of me or my incorrect perception of myself to shape my reality in a way that could be to my demise. 
this church's demise, my marriage demise, my children demise, and same for you. Keep your eyes clean. All right, another, another, another thing. Third or third, third sub point to this, keep your eyes clean, is your vision. Proverbs 29, 18, where there's no vision, people perish. Listen, you ever try to see with dirty glasses on? You don't know, it don't work. You don't know where you're going. Y'all who wear glasses, it don't work. If your mind is not being renewed, daily being renewed, if your understanding is not in the ways of God, in his instruction, in his laws, your vision it's cloudy. I remember some time ago, we were years ago, years ago, I think before only Kelly was born then. We were driving from Louisiana. You might remember, honey. We were driving from Louisiana to, uh, to Florida, to Disney that one time. And we have never driven down to Florida. It's our first time we are driven to Florida. And we were, on this, we were on this bridge. We didn't know it then. It was fog all around us. And when the fog started lifting, we saw there was water all around us. You remember that, honey? We were young people then. We were probably maybe 26, something like that, just traveling with our, 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 our one single daughter. We had one then. <laughs> now we got four. Oh. So when your vision is cloudy, you can't see around you. You can't hold perception and reality in balance because your vision, your eyes are dirty. Keep your eyes clean. So it says in 34, it says, the lamp of the body is the eye. You give yourself understanding. You give yourself wisdom. You give yourself knowledge by what your eye is or your understanding is allowed to see. So it, it, uh, Jesus refers it to a lamp. When you think of a lamp, it's something that what gives light. It illuminates. So your understanding, your, it illuminates your path and that you can't hold it all in balance. Second thing I'll say, second way we can balance perception and reality. So if, if the eyes is like a lamp unto the body, then the second one is be, hold on, the second one is guard your heart. If the eyes is the lamp to the body, then I can somewhat equate maybe uh, with some factuality that your heart is the gateway to your soul. Guard your heart. You want to keep perception and reality and balance. You want to be able to take what you hear others say of you or what you even say of yourself. Guard your heart. Word of God tells us in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above. How many times your heart did misled you? You perceive something. Your heart moved on that or your heart took it in and you later found out that was a bad juggle was I should have never dated him. That was a bad mistake. Your heart was deceitful. Why? Because let me take it up one more step. It was deceitful. You allow your heart to be de de deceived or, mis or wrongly uh, direct you because your eyes wasn't clean. You may enter, and even now, uh, uh, as, as a, uh, well into your, 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 your life now, you may you know, enter into a relationship with people that you might think be beneficial to you, and you come to find out. Huh. Like the other day on Wednesday, you know, we talked about uh, Minister Deborah. No, I didn't, I didn't feel God was saying, have her come minister next weekend. So, no. I'm guarding my heart from something that could, I don't know. I don't, who knows? But what I do know is that I'm trying to keep my eyes, my understanding family clean and trying to guard my heart that I don't allow perception of myself or self-perception or perception of others shape my reality in a way that could be to my demise. So you must guard your heart. So I'm going out music, please, Jonathan. Deuteronomy 4, 9 says, keep your soul Diligently, listen, listen, listen to this. Keep your soul diligently. Don't forget the things your eyes have seen. Listen, 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 listen how, how, how God brings this in, in, in Deuteronomy 4. Keep your soul diligently. Don't forget the things your eyes have seen, 
lest they depart from your heart. Guard your heart. Keep your eyes clean. And one last point and I'm done. How do we balance perception and reality? Again, the natural reality and the spiritual reality. Stay connected to the Spirit of God. How, look, what did Jesus tell Peter about his proclamation of who Jesus was? Flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, but it was by my Father in heaven. If you and I want to have a healthy perception and be on time to allow it to be interpretive, directive and motivational, we must stay connected to God's spirit because it is God's spirit that's going to give us the correct interpretation of the stimulus that is out there that is changing or could change our reality, what we see in perception. Turn with me, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll be done there. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Sometimes things that look so bad only because we allow our perception to form a reality in us that's not even real. Remember that definition I gave you about reality? It is something that you believe to be true, but not have no basis. I believe, before we did that big account yesterday, I believe that we're going to have barely enough to cover the mortgage or cover our lease here. But gosh, I, that's what I believe. I believe that to be true. That was my perception, and I shaped that to be my reality. And when I saw it, I saw something totally contrary, totally the opposite. So I must stay in step with the Spirit. And when the Spirit say do, then go do. Allow the Spirit's perception and the, of spiritual realities to shape my human perception and my human realities. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The perception of reality, the reality of perception. We say stay connected to the Spirit of God. Scripture tells us, look at verse 10. Oh, let's start at verse 11. Now we'll go back to verse 10. But God has revealed to them, revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. These things which also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with the spiritual. Look at verse 14. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You want to have, you want to be able to, to leverage the power of perception? Stay connected to the Spirit. Because it is a Spirit that's going to tell you things that are in the natural, that it won't seem foolish to you. Because you're connected to the Spirit. So the next time, the next time you have a self-perception of yourself or someone perceive or you feel like you're being something that you're not because or that you don't really don't want to be or you're being something because of what others say, go to, get connected to God's Spirit. I mean, a few times we might go visit somebody at another church. My first inclination is always to my first thing is to put jeans on because I like jeans. Then the second inclination is, well, they not like us. I need to go put some slacks on. They're like, no, I'm going to be who I'm going to be. I'm going to put some jeans on. And when I get there, you know, nobody look at me crazy. I remember one time I was at TBN. I wore jeans at TBN. Like my wife's like, you sure you don't wear the TBN? Like, this is who I am. The perception is that I need to come in some five, six button suit and all that stuff like that. No. My reality is that God has made me like this. And when I connected to God's spirit, God said it was okay. And when we got there, it was well received. It's what you think of yourself. You allow your self-perception to shape you to something that you didn't even want to be. Hope this helps somebody. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. God, thank you for helping us to see how perception of our reality 
can cause us to miss out on you. God, thank you for allowing us to see also how there's power in perception. So Father, we consider what's been said here these past 30 or 40 or so minutes. God, I ask that you would allow us to go and think about it more. And God, allow our lives now to walk and be shaped based on the spiritual perceptions of a spiritual reality and not of, the, of man or human. So God, I thank you for this. Thank you for your word and your grace.